Games nowadays are way too easy. You can breeze through them without consequence and can pretty much just pick up where you left off. Back in the cartridge days, we had password and save features were pretty rare and those games were either normal to rape you through the pants in difficulty. But when a game is difficult, it's usually for two reasons. Because it's designed poorly, or because it's designed that way. There's a difference between difficult and challenging. It's a very fine line. So what's the difference? Difficult is getting your ass handed to you while you know what to do and how to do it. Challenging is getting your ass handed to you while you figure out what you need to do, but when you figure it out, it's a cakewalk. And this is one of the most challenging Sonic games I've ever played. And it doesn't even have Sonic in it. I'm talking about Tails Adventure for the Game Gear. This is so out of step for a Sonic game. Yes, it's a platformer, but it's actually more of an RPG. You want to know why it took three weeks for me to post this video? Tails Adventures is one of the most challenging and slowest games I have ever played. Depending on where you hail from, there's two stories. The Western version says that after their last adventure, Sonic and Tails go their separate ways for a bit, and Tails discovers an island and decides to vacation there, but it's invaded by an army of evil birds. However, in the Japanese version, this game takes place before Sonic met Tails, and the island is Tails' home where his research lab is and is invaded by an army of birds. The Japanese version is considered the correct one, and it does give you some sort of time frame as where this takes place. The graphics aren't bad, and they're pretty good for the Game Gear. They certainly beat out the graphics in Sonic Blast. The music is alright for the Game Gear, but the level design is just lazy. And I'm talking Bubsy too lazy. There's about 10 levels, and most of them are just variations of the first and second. You really can't tell them apart. And the last level is the only one that's different in design. The levels are pretty big too, at least it feels that way since you're moving at a snail's pace. Controls are pretty good, however, selecting levels is a pain in the ass. The D-pad moves you A jumps and B uses an item. To switch items, you need to pause the game and use the left and right to cycle through your items. You're only allowed to carry four items with you, and this is why it took so long to make this review. If you go through a stage and bring the wrong item, you gotta make your way back to the beginning of the stage, go to your workshop, and switch out the item and start the stage all over again. Yeah, it's one of those games. It makes you backtrack, and you'll be doing that a lot. There's an item that lets you teleport back to your house, but it takes up an item space, leaving you with only three items instead of four. As you go through the stages, you'll collect items and level up tails. Gathering Chaos Emeralds increases your hit points, and rings replenish hit points. However, rings rarely drop from enemies or destructible walls. Your main weapon are bombs, and there's five of them, and they are all used for different things. There's other support items, like a remote control robot that lets you explore areas that Tails can't fit through. And that's what makes this game a challenge. It's the backtracking to get the right item to get through the stage. Oh, and you only have one life, so if you die, it's game over. However, there's a password system, but to get the password, you either have to die, then select continue at the title screen, or go back to your house and select continue and write down the password. So you have to jump through hoops to get the password, but it takes forever to die, so you'll be able to get pretty far. However, if you trap yourself, you either have to start over from your last password or kill yourself. And if you have a lot of hit points, you'll have to put some effort into suicide. It's pretty good for a spin-off game, and I would have loved to have seen a Genesis version, because this is the first Sonic RPG. They did a really good job on it. It just takes a really long time to play and to get through, so if you're going to play it on the Game Gear, better plug it in, because those batteries aren't going to last very long.